drinks in deep the water sweet and some days you may lead me through the desert even then you're still the reason I can sing I am blessed beyond measure so far Gain through earthly treasure. Whatever comes my way, still my soul will say, I am blessed. I am blessed. Through the trouble, pain, and disappointment. All right, it is time to begin this morning. Got a great looking crowd. Good to see everybody as always in church on Sunday morning. Amen. This is the place to be. Amen. Amen. And I hope that you came ready to receive from the Lord. And uh, I'll tell you, it's warming up outside, but it feels good in here. And we would just appreciate so much you being here. If you're watching live, we welcome you as well. Would you bow your heads and your hearts at this time? Let's go to the Lord in prayer. Heavenly Father, we're just so grateful to be in your house. And God, we come in with a heart of thanksgiving, God, worshiping you, Lord, in spirit and in truth. And I pray, God, that you would meet each and every need of every person. God, for we need you, Lord. We ask you to meet every need, Lord. We need you. We ask, Lord, that your presence would reach down, oh God, and fill our hearts. In the mighty name of Jesus, we ask. Amen. Amen. Put your hands together. Let's worship him. Go ahead. Oh, God said that he would turn it around. Well, my God said that he would turn it around. For what the devil meant for evil, for God will make it good. Turn around. My God said that he would turn it around. Well, my God said that he would turn it around. What the devil meant for evil, for God will make me good. Turn around, turn around, turn around. I know it may be midnight. Joy is soon to come. I know it may be midnight, but joy is soon to come. I know it may be midnight, but joy is soon to come. Turn around, turn around, turn around. Well, I know it may be midnight, but joy is soon to come. Turn it around. 
the devil meant for evil. Gotta make it good. Turn around, turn around, turn around. Let's give him some praise this morning. Well, let's give him all the praise. For God is in control. You thank him for that. Give him all the praise. Let's just give him all the praise. When God is in control, let's just give him all the praise. When God is in control, I said let's give him all the praise. When God is in control, turn around, turn around, turn around. Well, he gives me beautiful branches. Praise for my sadness Cause I remember this day He turns morning to dancing With sorrow and to joy And every day will be sweeter Than the day before He gives me beautiful rations With joy for my pain Morning to dancing, sorrow and to joy. Every day will be sweeter than the day before. God said He would turn it around. Well, my God said He would turn it around. What the devil meant. him because he's been good to me I don't have to hold anything back this morning because he's been way better to me than I have to him amen well Lord 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 well, you've really been good to me well, my Lord 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 you've really been good to me well, my Lord 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 you've really been good to me well, you have done well, you fed me when I was hungry, Lord, you fed me when I was cold. You gave me drink when I was thirsty, Lord, let me into the pool. Well, you satisfy my longing, and you supply my every need. You sanctify me holy, Lord, you've been a good friend of me. Let me tell you, my Lord, Lord, Lord. Hungry, Lord, you are. 
loved me when I was cold. You gave me drink when I was thirsty. And you let me into the fold. Well, you satisfy this longing. And you supply my every need. Well, you sanctify me, holy Lord. You've been a good friend of me. They've been taking my Lord, Lord, Lord. You've really been good with my Lord, Lord, Lord. You've really been good with my Lord. Praise the Lord. Amen. Ushers, would you come? We're going to receive the tithe and offering that supports the ministry of this church. Give as given unto the Lord with a cheerful heart. And well, he loves a cheerful giver. Amen. Amen. Bow your heads and your hearts at this time. Heavenly Father, again, we're just grateful, God, for this opportunity to be in your house and to worship you in giving, God. And I pray, Lord, that you would bless this offering, the gift and the giver, Lord. We give you honor in this offering today. In Jesus' name, amen. Well, would you be free from your burden of sin? Well, there's power in the blood, power in the blood. Would you be your people to be this wonderful power in the blood? Wider than snow. Well, there's power in the blood. There's power in the blood. Sin stains are lost in his life giving blue. Well, there's wonderful power in the blood. Are you thankful for that? Well, there is power, power, wonder working power in the blood. Precious blood of the Lamb. Would you be wider, much wider than snow? Well, there's power in the blood. There's power in the blood. Sin stains are lost in his life giving clue. Well, there's wonderful power in the blood. There is power, power, wonder working power in the blood. Precious blood of the Lamb. There is power, power, wonder working now in the blood of the Lamb. There is power, power, wonder working now in the precious blood of the Lamb. Come on, do you believe that this morning? Praise the Lord. Well, you can be seated in the house this morning, and again, we just thank you so much again for being here, and uh, I've already said it, but we welcome you, we welcome those that are watching live as well, and uh, we appreciate those. We've got several that are faithful to watch live, some uh, live out of state and cannot attend, and uh, but still, that's available to you, but again, there's nothing like being here in person, amen, so but again, we just thank you so much for being here. In way of announcements, uh, let me make mention. Uh, first of all, we have accumulated uh, quite a few extra things in the lost and found, which is back in the, in the uh, copier room. If you lost it, we want you to find it. So uh, please, if go by there. 
And, and you know, if you're like me, you forget. Maybe you didn't think you lost something, and you did. So, uh, so go by there and look anyway. And uh, there might be something back there that you forgot that you had. And uh, so um, look at that. Get, get, whatever, get what you can, and if it's yours, we want you to have it. All right. Also, uh, tonight's service is going to be a little bit different. We are, they, we, you know, they just had an outstanding time at youth camp. And um, I, I'm going to let them comment on it a little bit later. But we, I, I heard great things uh, about youth camp. And uh, so tonight we're going to, uh, they're going to do their uh, camp awards and uh, have a slideshow and some different things. Also going to have a water uh, baptism service. And uh, so we want, uh, if you are a water baptism candidate, we need you here about 15, uh, four, 15 after 4, about 4.15 and uh, you need a, uh, a towel and a change of clothes. And so uh, if we need you here there early. I wanna, I'll, I'll meet with all the candidates, as always, uh, at 15 after 4 today. But service, will, or we'll start everything off at 5 o'clock. We're going to do everything over in the gym and uh, going to have a time of fellowship, maybe some praise and worship, have some finger foods. And, uh, I mean, we're happier together when we get to eat. And so we're going to have some finger foods over in the gym and just have a great time of fellowship uh, tonight uh, starting at 5 o'clock. I need my ushers here a little bit early uh, to help me set up and help get everything ready, make sure everything's ready to go. Uh, so if I could get them here around 4.30 would be great. All right. Now, uh, also, the, if there's still time. If you want to put your name on the list to get water baptized, you can see uh, Sister Jennifer. And uh, she can hook you up and get ready for that. All right, June the, uh, June the 18th, next Saturday, the Joy 55 Club is going to be meeting up at uh, Brother Greg, Sister Cindy Hopper's uh, place. The bus will leave here at 2.30. So uh, you don't want to miss that. They're going to have a great time of food and fellowship up in the hills. And uh, so, all right. The 19th will be Father's Day. And uh, it'll be a great time here. We're going to honor our dads and uh, so uh, for Father's Day. So we'll be making plans to do that. Invite somebody to come also to be with you. Also, June the 20th uh, will be, uh, that'll be that following Monday uh, afternoon at 6.30 will be our next Christ for Veterans uh, meeting. Team B will be serving. So get with Sister Stacy, Brother Troy on that and what they would have you to help to bring. And uh, I want to say thank you for everybody that are faithful every meeting in making this possible. It's been just a great success so far. And if you know a veteran, invite them to come to fellowship and, and to, we, we feed them a meal, give them devotional, pray for their families, pray for our community, and pray for our nation. Our nation, it needs some prayer. Amen. Amen. Our nation needs some prayer. So uh, we're going to do that on June the 20th there at 6.30 over at the gym. Uh, I don't know of any other announcements other than Wednesday night. Wednesday night, 7 o'clock, going to pick right back up in Bible study. Something for all ages will come and uh, expect uh, uh, to receive from the Lord. Adults and teens uh, will be back in the Romans class, so uh, continue to bring your pen and paper and to add to the notes that you've already taken. All right. Yeah, bring, bring something to write, take notes, because it will be a benefit to you. It will be a blessing to you in your, your spiritual walk, your daily walk uh, with the Lord. But any other announcements that we'll make at a later time, I think that's all that I have. Do you have anything else, Pastor, right now? All right. Hannah, would you come? She's going to bless you in song. was spoken that judgment would come God searched the earth and hope just to find one all that he could say and Noah found grace in the eyes of the Lord saving his house from the soon coming storm of righteousness.
is sufficient for me.
Praise the Lord. Are you thankful for His grace today? You know, we all got different things that we all go through, and none of us is all situations are the same. But I think we can testify that most of us know that what it's like for everything to fall apart and everything to go wrong. I'm thankful for His grace today. We want to dismiss our children to make their way to Children's Church as they're coming back. We're going to go to the Lord in prayer. We know that Jesus is still a healer. We know that he's still able to heal the needs of the physical body. And uh, we're going to gather around, pray one for another. And as the Spirit, or as the Scripture teaches us to do at this time, would you come? Would you bring your need to the Lord at this time, please? Thank you, Lord. Well, thank you, Jesus. Oh, Lord, Almighty. Oh, yes. For my soul, yes. Lord, as long. Oh, yes. And even saints for you. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Family, would you come? It's satisfied within your presence. But I see beneath the shadows of your wings. Oh, it better is one day.
Come on, church, let's worship him. Let's worship him this morning. Go ahead. Oh, yeah. appreciate the presence of the Lord this morning. Amen. Thank you, singers and musicians, for your help today. It's good to see all of you in the house of the Lord. We thank you so much for coming and being faithful to the Lord's house. All of us are busy, and we've got other things that we could do, but the house of the Lord ought to be a priority. Amen. And we're glad that you are here this morning to be in service with us today. If you want to grab your Bibles and turn with me, to the book of Acts in chapter number 26. Acts in chapter 26. We're going to look at four or five verses here. Give me some monitor, please. There you go. Verses 24 through 28. Pastor Brian already mentioned, you can turn down just a hair. He already mentioned that we had a great time at youth camp. Youth camp is always... Well, we come home, war, slap, out. Amen. <laughs> Amen. I remember Pastor Mike down at Baton Rouge. He said, tomorrow all of you campers are going home, and you got to go home because we got to get some sleep. And that's the way I feel sometimes. But we had an outstanding, just incredible time. The presence of the Lord was powerful. We're going to tell more about it tonight. The Lord absolutely just done miracles in the hearts of some of these young people. And we are so grateful for everything that the Lord done. I said that to say this. I don't mean to talk about youth kids. I know we're going into it tonight. But I finished up Wednesday night service with this text. The text that I'm bringing to you this morning. I didn't get to go into it very long. Uh, but I just couldn't move away from it this morning. And so 
I'm going to go back there. There's not going to be a lot of depth as far as teaching, but I pray that it's a challenge for you, an opportunity for us to check our heart. I want to tell you this this morning before we read our text, and, and not, not that it's something that you don't know, but I want to just remind you this morning that the Word of God, the Scripture that we are reading, it was inspired by the Holy Spirit. God himself moved upon men as they began to put pen to paper and write. And we know King James authorized, this, the one I'm reading, authorized the interpretation, the translation of this Bible. But as we read, we're reading the words of the Holy Spirit as he moved upon men and women of old. And it was, again, the word of God being sharper than any two-edged sword. So when we read the word and when we begin to preach and proclaim, it is a time for every single individual in here to allow this text, to allow the scripture to examine your heart. You're still a free moral agent. But to allow this scripture to examine your heart in regards to what application is there for me as an individual. God knows exactly what you need this morning. And I'm just asking you this morning as we read the text that you would allow the Lord to examine your individual heart. If it's for you, we're going to have an opportunity and a moment to apply it to our heart by faith. And if it, well, it, it'll be something will be for you this morning. And so let's read Acts chapter 26, verses 24 through 28. And the Bible says, I'm cutting in the middle of this story. And as he thus spake for himself, Festus said with a loud voice, Paul, thou art beside thyself with much learning doth make you mad. But he said, I am not mad, most noble Festus, but speak forth the words of truth and soberness. For the king knoweth of these things before whom also I speak freely. For I am persuaded that none of these things are hidden from him. For this thing was not done in a corner. King Agrippa, he approaches King Agrippa, says, King Agrippa, believest thou the prophets? I know that you believe. Then Agrippa said unto Paul, Almost thou persuadest me to be a Christian. Will you back up to verse number 27? I want you to look at the question that Paul asked Agrippa. He said, and he answered it, King Agrippa, believest Thou the prophets, I know that you believe. I know that you believe. And my thought this morning will it's be a simple examination of her heart is going to be this. I know that you know. Well, what's that mean? Well, I'll explain it. But I know that you know this morning. Will you bow your head and will you help me to pray that God would help me to minister this word this morning. Father, I love you today. I thank you, God, for your grace and for your mercy and love, and I thank you for the opportunity one more time, God, to preach and proclaim your word. I'm asking you in the name of Jesus Christ that the power of the Holy Ghost would move upon each and every one of us, God, to open our spiritual ears to hear our heart, God, that we would receive and apply it, and that you would anoint my lips to rightly divide this great word of truth. Lord, I'm asking and I'm depending upon you to do something that I cannot do, and that is to pull at the heart of every individual that's here. And Lord, I'll be very careful to make sure that you get the praise, the glory, and the honor. In Jesus' name we ask it, amen and amen. One of the major weaknesses in the church world today, and not in just the church, but I won't be before you, I don't have a, well, I really don't got many notes. I was going to say I won't be before you long, but that always gets me in trouble. One of the major weaknesses in the church world today, and I'm, I, I want you just to hear me out before you shut me down, but not just in the church world, but the world as a whole, is the professing to be a Christian or the professing to be a believer, but the refusal to follow Christ. There is a majority of professing, there is a majority of people claiming, I'm a Christian, but we're seeing very few that are 
following Christ. If we looked at, and I'm not big on it, on statistics, I believe the last statistic I looked at was 72, 73% of the United States of America claims to be a Christian, claims to be a follower of Christ. Well, let me just say a Christian. But, and we look at cutting it down to the church, of the church world as a whole, when they did a poll to see how many actually reads their Bible, only 4% of professing Christians actually read their Bible in a church of 100 that don't take care of our teachers. But the problem and the issue and the weakness is is that we have a lot of professing Christians taking a man's word for it and never opening their Bible to see what God said himself. And if the United States is 72% Christian, how come is it that we're seeing the laws that are being passed be passed? How come is it we're seeing the evil that is being embraced? Why is it being embraced? Why is the good being pushed off to the side? Why are we fighting over if the Ten Commandments are at the courthouse or if they are not? If you've got 70, listen, if 72% was actually Christian, if you had somebody to come to with an argument, well, I'm offended because the Ten Commandments are in the courtyard. That would be shut down so fast they wouldn't even give it TV time. But we have a majority of believers, or I mean, not believers, but we have a majority of, of, of people that are professing, I'm a believer, but we don't, we're not seeing the evidence of them actually following Jesus Christ. And so I want to talk about that in just a moment. I want to carefully explain without being accused of being judgmental or being uh, judging somebody. I'm not judging. Look, if you accuse me of, of judging, you don't, you don't know me. But Because I understand the working of grace. And I also understand that every believer has their own work of grace. The issue and where I can call, uh, where I can begin to call into question is when I don't see any works of grace at all. Well, that's not none of your business. Listen, John 7 tells us to judge righteous judgment. That command is given to the believer. If the believer and the follower of Christ does not judge righteous judgment, then who is going to? We're supposed to know what is of God and what is not of God. I don't want to bore you this morning, but I want to carefully explain. The disciples were first called under the name and under the title Christian in Acts chapter 11. They were called Christian. We call you Christians this morning in Acts chapter 11. I want you to understand this. Do you know where that term came from? That term came from the outside world. It came from the heathen. It came from those that were bound by religion. But they looked at the disciples and those that were preaching on these missionary journeys and they said, that group, we shall call them and we shall title them as a Christian. What did it mean? To be a Christian mean to be a follower of Jesus Christ. And you know what? The, those that were following Christ, they just honored that title. They honored that term because it meant that their, watch this, it meant their behavior was reflecting the, the, the evidence of a living God that came into their heart. You have to turn me down just a little bit, Joey. It, the, their evidence, it, it was the reflection of the heart. Something supernatural had taken place. Something supernatural had happened and caused them, watch this, to lay aside their formal life, their former life, and to begin to follow Jesus and to be a witness of everything that he both that he began both to do and to teach. When they seen them, it reminded them of the life of Jesus Christ because of everything they were saying, everything that was happening, the signs and the wonders. Listen, uh, Jesus told them, go into the world. Go heal the sick. Go preach deliverance. Go and baptize. They were doing this and because of that they said that group of people they shall be called Christians. And they said I'll take it. I'm honored to, to represent the one that died for me. They knew that as a follower. If I follow Christ 
I've surrendered myself, my life, to the usefulness of the kingdom of God. And today in the world, I've said it before, the majority of professing Christians, we have a profession, but we don't have a following. We have a, look, I'm not getting on to you, I promise you. I'm encouraging you. I'm asking you to examine your heart. I, I'm, 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 I'm just, I'm, look, it hit me too when I was in that dorm and I, I thought, why in the world? Well, I, am I going to bring this to the young people tonight? And the Spirit of the Lord moved in a, in a powerful, powerful way. And you know what I learned is King Agrippa was an example of one that already knew, but he hadn't chosen yet to follow Christ. We can know, but are we following the Lord? Now, to the ones that, to an individual that is professing to be a believer but not following Christ, that's not biblical salvation. And I know that if you want eternal life, you want to know what biblical salvation is. Amen. Amen. And so uh, I want to look at this, but uh, uh, the, the Bible teaches us, and I still believe in this, that the moment that an individual believes with proper faith from the heart upon Jesus Christ, the Bible teaches us at that moment that the power of the Holy Spirit, listen, the power, Romans 6 and 3, Holy Spirit comes to baptize us into Jesus Christ. He baptizes us in the complete and total life and the work of Christ, which means I'm baptized into his death, his burial, and his resurrection, and I've been raised up to walk in the newness of life. I fear today that much of the church has forgotten how powerful that work truly is. Ezekiel prophesied and said in chapter 36, verse 26, I will place in you a new heart. I will put in you a new spirit to cause you to walk in my judgments and in my statutes. Listen, if he takes the heart of stone out and gives you a heart that is pliable and gives you his spirit, we should walk in his statutes. Praise the Lord. I know we're under grace, but grace helps us to walk in the statutes of the Lord. No judgment, no judgment here, but I want to tell you that I still believe in the power of the miracle of salvation, of biblical salvation. And listen, when the Holy Spirit comes into your heart, He's not going to leave you like He found you. He's not going to leave you that way. My desires change. My desires for the Lord. No, I'm not yet perfect. Yes, I still need to depend upon Jesus Christ, but I should be changing. Listen, something is wrong. If you are a believer and you're the same man today as you was six months ago, something is wrong. We should be changing, being transformed. That change continues to happen. And so my challenge this morning in regards to King Agrippa is for you to allow the Holy Spirit to check and to examine your heart. Jesus said, Luke chapter 9, verse 23. Tristan just happens to be here this morning, and he's recited to me this over and over. You know what I'm going to say? Daily, daily, daily. They made me a plaque with that saying on it. <laughs> Jesus said, Luke 9, 23, If any man, any man, should come after me, let him deny himself, take up his cross daily, and follow me. We're talking about being a believer, being a follower of Christ. The word deny here, listen, watch this. It means to abstain or disown your self-desires. Abstain from or disown your self-desires. The word follow here literally means to go in the same way accompanied with Christ, accompanied with Christ, to, to deny, to abstain, to disown my self-desires, and to accompany myself with Jesus Christ, to be as the, the, the disciple, or as they called it in Acts 11, and as we call it today, to be a Christian, to be a follower of Christ, is to deny or disown my self-desire, and to accompany my life after the life of Jesus Christ. Now, I don't learn all of that at once, but little by little, as I read His Word or set under anointed teaching, I learn what the Lord requires of me. And when I see what God requires, I say, God, I fall short in that area also but because I see that's what you want in me I place my faith in Jesus and I'm asking grace to flow in my life in that area help me to be what you want me to be 
It's not to see something God requires of us and to say, well, I don't think I want that. I'm still a believer, but I'm not going to let that. Look, that's not, a, that's not a common reaction of the believer. The believer is to recognize where we fall short. And if you don't think you fall short, well, let me just make that short and say you're wrong. If you don't think you fall short, you are wrong. But when we recognize an area that we fall short, look, Hannah just sang about it. He gives me grace. He gives me grace. And when grace is available, I say, Lord, I need grace to fall, to flow in this area also so that I can be what you need me to be. That's why Paul would say in regards to giving, to giving tithe and offering, I pray that you would be brought into this grace also. We need the grace of God to change. He's not here this morning, doesn't go, but Brother Bob Hanshaw went to church with him as a child. He said, when I got saved, I had to go back and get my billfold saved also. Had to get it saved. I wanted to hold on to that. But he said, Lord, give me grace. That's why Paul said, we need grace in that area also. If that's an area that we fell short in, if a different area, then we say, God, I've fallen short here in this area. The beautiful thing about this is the work of grace is that it's between you and God. And nobody, God the Holy Spirit's not running to somebody to tell you, uh, to tell somebody else all of your faults. Praise the Lord for that. He's talking to you individually about the things that we fall short in. And when God talks to me about the things, the let me say it like this, the secret things in my heart that I don't want you to know about, and he begins to talk to me about it, I say, God, I recognize that, and I'm asking you to forgive me, and I'm asking you to change that in me. Give me grace that that also would line up with what you desire. Don't you love the working of grace, the working of the Holy Spirit? Praise the Lord for that. So, the challenge is this. I know, listen to me, that you know about Christ. I know that you know about Christ. But have you become a follower of Christ? Sister Cynthia Lockridge is back. Finally, I didn't get to greet her this morning, but she's back this morning from her mission trip. I hope it's okay if I say this, but... I'm going to keep it real short, but she sent me a picture, and she said, these people are unreached. They're unreached. Is that okay? She said, they're unreached. And I thought about that, unreached. Do you know that in America, when she said unreached, meant not heard of the gospel, and not yet, they're, they're completely unreached. Some places you're not supposed to be. But I thought about that. You know what? In America, I'm not sitting among people that are unreached as far as hearing the gospel. I don't know if you'll find somebody that's not heard about Jesus. Think about what I'm saying. I'm not sitting in a church when I said the name of Jesus that you caught you plumb off guard. You've heard. Most of you have heard from a child. You've heard about Jesus. See, I know that you know. You know about Jesus and you know about what he's done. But my question is, Are you following him? I want to take you back to the conversion of Paul. The moment that he was taken before King Agrippa, I want you to think about this courtroom setting that he was before. It is believed that this was the fifth trial, the fifth trial that Paul was taken in. And, And this trial here was not even planned, but the fifth trial that Paul was taken before Somebody of authority because of his confession of Jesus Christ. His accusation was that you are preaching Jesus that has resurrected from the dead. And Paul was saying, I'm not just preaching that he resurrected from the dead. But in the book of Romans 4, he said, I'm declaring to you that he is the son of God because he rose from the dead. I'm not just saying a man rose from the dead. I'm saying that he is the son of the living God, which his resurrection from the dead proved that everything that he'd done on the cross of Calvary was a finished work. If there would have been one single sin not atoned for, he could not have rose from the dead. And he said, I'm declaring he's the son of God. He's not just one that came from the dead, but he is the son of the living God. And so... 
not a scheduled trial. He was before Festus, who was a judge. He was a procre- uh, uh, He was a governor, uh, uh, spoke for the people, a lawyer. And he began to represent, and here's what happened. I, I'm just going to put it in my own words. Here's what happened. King Agrippa and his sister Bernice came into the city. And when they got there, they came to give honor to Festus. When they came before the governor to give him honor, Festus said this, Hey, while you're here, I've got one that's already been before four of us. He's even went before Caesar. And he said, they're accusing him of preaching Jesus that have been resurrected from the dead. And this man is declaring him to be the Son of God, the Messiah that we've been looking for. He said, will you let him stand before you? And will you hear what he's got to say? And King Agrippa said this, I tell you what, I'll do that tomorrow. I'm going to go about my visit tomorrow. You bring him before the court square, uh, square and I will stand before, I will, he will stand before me, and I will hear everything he's got to say. So the next day, you got King Agrippa, his sister was there. You had Festus that came. They went and got Paul. He was still in bounds, and they brought him before King Agrippa. And he said, King Agrippa, may I speak freely? And King Agrippa said this. Yes, you can, Paul. You can speak freely. He honored Agrippa. He honored Festus. He meant no disrespect. He was not trying to belittle them in any way, but he said, King Agrippa, here's what I've got to tell you. And it's, I say it a lot, but it's too important for me to just pass by. He said, I was on my way. I just came from one that gave me the authority to persecute and to stone to whatever it took or to bring them back, all everybody that professed to be a believer. He said, Agrippa, I had walking papers in my hand. I had the right, I had the legal papers to come and to, to do what they asked me to do. And he said, while I was on my way on the road to Damascus, there was a great light that shone upon all of us and it knocked every single one of us flat to the ground. And while I was on the ground, The Lord called out to me and said, Saul, Saul, why does thou persecutest me? Saul, it is hard for you to kick against the pricks. And he looked and he said, who are you, Lord? And he told him, he said, I am the one that you have persecuted. The one that you're going to persecute other believers. I am him. I am alive. What would you have me to do, Lord? He said, y'all want them to lead you into the city, on into Damascus. He finished his trip to Damascus. He just went with different walking papers. When he got into Damascus, he was blinded. He had fasted for three days. The Lord called out to Ananias, and Paul is telling the grip of this. The Lord talked to a man by the name of Ananias, and he sent him to me, and he told him where I was and said for him to pray for me that I would receive my sight and be filled with the Holy Ghost because I had been commissioned to take the gospel to the Gentile world. And he said, Agrippa, this man showed up. He prayed for me. There was a miracle that happened. Scales fell off my eyes. I was healed by the power of God. I began to, I was filled with the Holy Ghost and I got up and I went immediately and began to preach the gospel. And as he told his conversion, Festus said, Paul, you're crazy. You speak as somebody that's mad. You've lost your mind. I want you to think about this. If I was addressing two of these men, And dressing them, Festus took his attention and he said, Paul, you're crazy. But Paul turned his attention back to Agrippa and he said, Agrippa, I'm not mad. I'm not crazy. And then he looks at him and he says this, Agrippa, do you believe the scripture? Do you believe the prophets? And then most Bible scholars believe that he done everything he could to save Agrippa the question. Now think about this moment. Now Agrippa is on trial and he has to answer, he's asked a question that has hit him slap in the face. Now watch this. To save him the embarrassment, Paul looks at Agrippa and says, I know you believe. I know that you believe. I know Agrippa. Here's the struggle. And everyone in here, if, you, if you've not made the, anybody that has not made the decision to follow Christ, here's the struggle. Agrippa, to say, yes, I believe. 
would have meant that his political stance was in jeopardy. It would have blown everything. He would have had to completely have a new lifestyle, come off of his place of authority. But he believed. So do I discard and disown, deny self? Do I disown everything and accompany myself with Paul and the Jesus that he's preaching? Or what do I do? And all of a sudden, Festus speaks up and says, let's talk about this in private. And he didn't have to make the decision, but on his heart was this, I believe. Am I going to follow Christ or not follow? By saying, I know you believe, he was saying this, Agrippa, let me, let me back up and say this. Agrippa was not uneducated when it comes to Jesus. If we did a little bit of search here, and I'll just give it to you, and you can go look it up, you will find out that his grandpa was King Herod that came looking for Jesus in the very beginning to have him killed. Herod was the very one that the wise man came and said, we have seen his star and we've come to worship him. Do you know where he is? And Herod lied and said, no, but when you find him, come tell me because I also want to worship him. He was lying. And when he knew that the wise man wasn't coming back, he just uh, he, he ordered the murder of all of the firstborn children so that he could in hopes of killing Jesus and annihilating him. That was Agrippa's grandfather. Agrippa's father was... To, Agrippa the first and he followed after Herod's example and he was a bad king you can't tell me that Agrippa the second that we're reading about didn't have a little bit of knowledge about this Jesus and all of a sudden in his mind he's thinking this I know you believe in other words I know you believe the prophets I know you know Isaiah that, that when Isaiah prophesied in chapter 7 and said that there would be a virgin that would conceive and you shall call his name Emmanuel. I know that you know Isaiah 53 that he was wounded for our transgressions and by his stripes we were healed. I know that you know that this king is the one that I'm talking about that was the sacrifice, the sheep that was led to slaughter but never opened his mouth. King Herod, I know that you know that, that they took him after 33 and a half years. False accused him. Pilate could find nothing wrong. I know you know, Agrippa. I know that you know that they took him and gave him a cross. That they placed the crown of thorns upon his head. I know you know about the beating that he took. I know that you know about his blood that would be shed. I know that you know they placed him in a tomb. But on the third day, he was resurrected from the dead. Agrippa, what are you going to do about it? <laughs> I'm liking this a lot more than you are. So I know you know. And he says this. Pastor Agrippa, what are you going to do with this moment where you've got to decide that you would follow Christ or you'll reject him again? I know you believe. Now, it's the same thing with America today and the gospel. I'm going to say it like this. I know that the majority of America, if not all, I'm going to dare to say that everybody in here, I know that you know about Jesus. I know that you've heard the gospel preached. I know that you have heard that he loved you while you were still a sinner. I know this morning that over and over you've heard that because of the shedding of his blood that there is remission for all sins. I know that you know that all you have to do is to believe from the heart upon Jesus and what he did on the cross of Calvary and you can be born again. I know that you know about mercy. I know you know about grace. I know you know about his love and his forgiveness. I know that you know that. But if I'm in the place of, well, I can know it, here's my question. What have you done with it? Is it a head knowledge to us? Or do we believe it? 
Is it a head knowledge or do I believe it? I know you heard the story. Can I just go a little further? It's really quiet, so I, I want to go a little further and say this. The scripture is meant, as I started this message out, and said the scripture is meant to examine our individual heart. We can go through the motions. We can do it all right in regards to the eyes of man. But when it comes down to the heart, I want to ask you this question. Are you a follower of Jesus Christ? If you were in the group uh, in the very beginning, in Acts 11, will the religious world and the heathen world, will they point their finger at you and say, he's a Christian or she's a Christian? Simple question. I want to tell you this. There's nobody that's ever been born of a woman that cannot live for Jesus if they desire. Because do you know what he's done for you? When we were separated from God and had no way to be with the Lord, Jesus steps out of heaven. He took on the likeness of man because we needed a representative man. He took on the likeness of man. He walked this cruel earth and got nothing but mocking and ridicule while he was here for 33 and a half years just so that he could make a way that whosoever would believe upon him, they could be saved. He done exactly as the Father asked him to do. Even though sometimes it was difficult and he would have to say, Lord, not my will, but your will. Lord, if you can find another way, I'd sure like for this cup to pass for me. But nevertheless, not my will, but your will. He could have called angels. He could have opted out. But he stayed. He was pointed at. He was mocked. He was ridiculed. His beard was plucked. He was spit upon. He was lied upon. But he stayed. <laughs> and he made that walk up Galgotha's Hill. And they nailed him to that cross and raised him up to fulfill the scripture. If I be lifted up, I'll draw all men unto me. And when John recorded the words, it was so right when he said, It is finished. It's done. What was done? Everything you need to live for God. Hannah sang about it earlier, and I done brought it up. We need the grace of God. We need the help of the Holy Spirit. Here's what Jesus has done. First of all, he had mercy upon our life. How many can testify, can look back in my life and see, if it wasn't for the mercy of God, I wouldn't even be here this morning. He had mercy upon us. He had love toward us while we were, while we were dirty, rotten, in sin. A lot of times we think, I thank God that he loves me now because I'm saved. Look, he loved you before you were saved. He loved you. And then he said, all you got to do is believe upon me and I will forgive or I will put away all of your sins, everything that you've ever done. I will put that away. This is what God's done for us so that we could be in relationship. And then after we're forgiven and we're in a right standing, justified by, his, by our faith, he says, I'm going to give you grace. If you'll just keep your faith in Christ just the same way that you were saved, if you'll just keep your faith right there, I'm going to give you the help of the Holy Spirit. To help you each and every day and in every situation to live for me. Do you know what he's done? Do you know the one thing he didn't leave us? He didn't leave us an excuse. <laughs> so my question is quiet and it's simple. As we allow the Holy Spirit to examine. My question is this. You know all about Jesus. But are you a follower of Christ? Are you a follower of Christ? King Agrippa, I know that you know. I know you know. History says that King Agrippa, from that moment, his life took a downward spiral. 
He contemplated suicide. He got in so much debt uh, to Caesar that he ran, flew, he fled to Italy just to try to get away and try to get from it. If the Lord pricks our heart, it is an opportunity for us to follow, to follow Jesus and to be what God has wanted me to be. I'll leave you with this, and I'm going to hush. I know you've heard the story of Jesus. I know you know all about Christ. I know you know. But are you a follower of Jesus Christ? Would you stand with me? Father, I love you this morning. I thank you, God, for your grace and for your mercy and love. Thank you for every individual, God, that is here. Lord, sometimes we want to make it look and we want to make it seem like it's no big deal. Somebody either accepts, they make the walk and they accept Christ or, or they reject Christ. But the truth of the matter is, God, something that we've overlooked is that making that decision to follow you, it's a struggle. God, it can be a great struggle. When we're being pulled by our own self-desires, when we're being uh, uh, reminded of the sacrifice, it can be a struggle. But this morning, I'm asking you, Lord, as I reach out to the one that has a hard spot in their heart, as I reach out to the one that, ain't, that hasn't quite made the decision that I'm going to follow, I pray this morning, Lord, that you would move upon their heart and the decision this morning would be today's the day now is the time I have decided to follow Jesus and I'm going to follow him from this day forward we can try it on our own I've tried it on my own life doesn't get any better it gets worse and worse and in a mess but the moment I decided to follow Jesus not always been a smooth road, but I've always had the help of the Holy Spirit. And I don't want to be without grace this morning. Well, this morning with your head still bowed and your eyes closed, I just simply ask you that question. I know I've made a hard call. I know it's been not a shout-me-down message. But you're here this morning. Tell you what I want to do. Pastors, would you come? Can I get their wives? Boards, would your wives come and Brother Shay? We'll make the first step. Whether you're a man or whether you're a woman, we're here this morning to pray for you. If you're here this morning with your head bowed and your eyes closed, I just want to ask you. Maybe you're here and you've not made that decision to really follow Christ. Only you know your heart. We could sit and look and we can be fooled. But are you a follower of Christ? And if you answer honestly and say, I'm really not a follower of Christ, but I want somebody to help me pray that I would become a follower of Jesus. If they're going to point fingers and call me something, I'd just soon to be called a Christian. I'd just soon to be called somebody that loves Jesus. If that's you this morning, would you come? Would you come? We made the first step. Would you come this morning? I want to be a follower of Christ. Would you come? We tarry just a minute. Would you come? Now's the time. Would you come? I'm going to follow Jesus. I want to serve him. I want to deny myself, and I want to be useful in his kingdom. Would you come right now? Come on, would you come? Anybody? We're ready to pray for you. We're here to love you. We're here to extend grace, not judgment. Would you come this morning? Would you sing that for us, Brother Jeff?
Worship with us just a moment. It's a good opportunity. Amazing grace. Amazing grace. How sweet the sound. The saved a wretch. The wretch like me. Hallelujah. I once was lost, but now I'm found. Hallelujah. Was blind, but, but now, now I see. Come on, I know you know it. Let's sing it. It was, it was grace. Set on my, my heart, heart to fear. And grace, my, my fears, really. Hallelujah. How precious did that grace be. Yeah, I first be. My chains are gone. Come on, just worship a moment. I've been set free. set free. Hallelujah. My God, my, my Savior, has ransomed me. Hallelujah. And like a flood, His mercy reigns. Unending love. Sing that again, please. My chains are gone. Hallelujah. I've been set free. My God, my, my Savior, has ransomed me. me. And like a flood, His, His mercy reigns. Unending love. Hallelujah. Amazing grace. Praise the Lord. Amen. And thank you, Lord, for what you've done this morning. I pray this morning, God, if, if there would be one, I would say that, it, that you have dealt with their heart. God, I've done my best to plant or to water a seed this morning. I'm asking you to continue to deal with their heart. Does it have to be here? But I pray they make that decision to follow you, God, all the days of their life. If somebody's watching live, I'm asking you to touch them also, and we ask it in the name of Jesus, amen and amen. Well, we appreciate you so much being here and being faithful to the house of the Lord this morning, and uh, God bless you so very much. Don't forget this afternoon, we're going to be baptizing. we got several youth, I believe, that we're going to be baptizing this evening, and that's always an honor. Got our camp pictures, and, and they're going to have a time of... Uh, some, some fellowship also. We're going to be doing some camp style worship. And by that, I mean acoustic guitar and our voices. And so it's not a blessing for you if I lift my voice, but it's a blessing when all the voices go together. And so uh, uh, you don't have to amen that, Brother Jeff. But we want you to come out. We're going to have a great time and be a part of this special moment in the lives of these young people this evening. Amen. God bless you, and we thank you so much for being here. Brother Davis, would you pray? In this